Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. Today I want to take you around Amour Gentleman, which is the men's version of Amour. They do have a few stores in uh, Tokyo, but this one in particular was very interesting and one I hadn't visited before. Now here we have a bolide bag in elephant skin. Can you believe it? That I believe is vintage. So they no longer make bags in elephant skin. And that is a Murakami camouflage piece, which is quite rare. A gorgeous gypsy air in this beautiful pinkish red color. Then panning over to the sack plait from the cherry collection. Absolutely love that piece. And this little panda bag from the Murakami line. Also highly collectible. And a Loewe briefcase. Little Burberry bag in the corner up there. And a Steven Sprouse uh collection bag and these I think these are Danube bags from the Multicolor. Really love those and who doesn't love a good Louis Vuitton hard sided piece especially when it's the Multicolor. I really love how the Multicolor looks on the hard sided pieces. It really pops. That's also a bit of a throwback silhouette there but I feel like that cargo style is coming back in fashion. A 90s briefcase by Chanel. Bags that look like the uniform uh, bag, but they're not. And going up to a Comme de Garçon X Louis Vuitton collaboration. Pretty cool collector's piece there. Gorgeous Goyard. And another beautiful trunk case. I imagine this would cost, cost a fortune. However, if you did invest in it, I do think it would be a great collector's piece and probably go up in value, right? This is another HAC. It looks like it's around 13,000 Australian dollars. Oh, that's actually not too bad. And a city steamer bag from Louis Vuitton, which we saw a lot on the recent Pharrell Western collection uh, runway show. I made a video on it if you want to check it out. These are the pinnacle of collector's pieces. These little hard-sided Murakami trunk cases and some multicolor SLGs. Some more HAC bags, which... Uh, if you didn't know, the HAC actually came before the Birkin. Stephen Sprouse collection and Epi Speedies. Now, monogram pieces in uh, Japan can sometimes be found for really good deals. They're quite common, actually, in just the, you know, the classic monogram. But I found that the, you know, more limited edition Louis Vuitton pieces did fetch much higher prices. But you can sometimes find the occasional deal. Um, but I think, you know, because a lot of people in Japan collect vintage pieces, they are sometimes priced quite high, I found. Wow. It's uh, 1,000. And this is a little sculpture from the Multicolor Collection. Um, okay, now I just felt like taking a selfie in front of the beautiful window display. Was contemplating making this my thumbnail, but wasn't quite sure if it would be right, the lighting. This is the elephant bolide again. Now, I'm not one to endorse killing an elephant as they are an endangered species, but I've heard that the elephant skin is one of the most durable leathers, which doesn't surprise me. And collectors do look for... That kind of thing. Then I made my way over to Ragtag and I really regret not picking up this Acne Studios jumper. Um, I have one similar already in a pink so I decided not to pick it up but I do regret it. And this is a little Mason Margiela bag that reminds me a little bit of a bleed but this silhouette is very much trending this season. Now, if you go to Ragtag, you might find a few cool pieces. I did find some trousers in here, and I think my boyfriend Alex also found some really cool track pants. Some prices are quite high, you know, they have a lot of designer clothes, but they do have some, you know, more local Japanese brands, uh, contemporary brands. This uh, Givenchy cardigan was around the $200 mark, so, you know, nothing, it's not too crazy, you know. Now, this was one of my most favorite vintage stores, Camellia Vintage. I would recommend checking it out. The pricing was quite high, but it was great for the eye candy. And if you are a true collector, you might find something like this gorgeous plume bag from Hermes in Crocodile. The 90s vanity case, I mean goals, that is like what I saw in the Barbie movie. Uh, and, you know, a Chanel football, a beautiful runway piece. Okay, iconic with the manga eyes. Oh, that is amazing. If I was a millionaire, I would buy that. And Hermie the horse, love that. 
<laughs> and then we have a, a little vibrato bucket bag. Uh, let me know what you think that bucket bag is called. And I think I would choose actually the crocodile Kelly bag if I did win the lottery. I mean, that is to die for. Now I hope I go and oh, okay. Couldn't get my eyes off that plume bag though. Probably out of my price range, but yeah, let's make my way into the store. Here we go. Now, this is a Chanel boy bag in denim and some vintage Fendi there. Oh, so exciting. I just love shopping in Japan and the 90s Chanel pieces seems like it. Beautiful, a Diamante clutch bag, super classy, something you might wear to the Grammys. And yeah, let me have a look at how much this costs. About 4000 Australian dollars there when we do the conversion. Not cheap, not cheap. But I was rocking my mosaic bag, which I picked up from Orange Boutique. Which actually, I think I got that for a good deal. Garden Party, 36 5000 Yeah, a bit expensive. And then we have some vintage mini Evelyns with the, can uh, with the leather strap, sorry. Which is something they don't really do anymore. Look at that Louis Vuitton heaven. Wow, wow, wow. You know, the multicolor again. Pretty common in Japan. Really pristine condition here. But, you know, you're going to pay the price. This Nano Speedy was $4,000. Whoa. I mean, it is rare though, right? It's getting rare. Oh, that little silver bag. I actually used to have that one. I found it on eBay. But, you know, I, I sold my whole Louis Vuitton collection. Gorgeous agenda there. And, oh. That is, I forgot what that's called, but I do like that east-west silhouette. That is definitely coming back in fashion. The Neo Speedy in the denim, again, back in fashion. We saw Louis Vuitton reissue the denim collection just this year. And this little Chanel bowling bag was goals, but 6000 bucks. Mm, don't know about that. Um, but yeah, I guess if you compare it to modern, oh, 13, probably around $13,000 for that mini. Caviar beige, though. Mm, a collector's dream. Cambon line. Oh, can't quite see the price there, but yeah. Those tend to go for a little bit less. And black and gold Chanel. Can't go wrong, can you? Chevron. Look at that gold hardware. People love the 24K plated hardware. That looks a little bit more of a modern piece there with the fabric. Number five, that gorgeous luscious lambskin with the silver hardware. That looks like a double-sided flap. And this flap bag was a little bit more modern. I think it's from around 2018. And of course, my favorite, Hermes. You've got the Birkin 30 there in blue, around 16,000 Australian. That color was to die for. What is that brown, guys? Let me know. That is gorgeous. Oh, is that bubble gum my favorite? And of course, a beautiful Constance, which looks like it's in box. I think that was around 20k, which is around the retail actually for box calf, believe it or not. And uh, crocodile, the vibrato again. Um, do you like the vibrato, guys? I don't mind it, but it does look a bit vintagey. Then a Kelly 32, I think it might be in retourne with silver heart or palladium hardware. You know, I find that box calf with palladium tends to be a little bit rarer you see in vintage they tend to do more gold hardware but you know palladium hardware i've been really obsessed with it lately a kelly pochette 20k box calf and one of my favorites the trim bag this was pretty similar to the one that jackie kennedy used to wear um uh, back in the 70s this one was three thousand dollars wow and some chanel scarves oh look at that fluffy Oh, what was your favorite, guys? And, oh, I absolutely love Hermes bag charms, but didn't find any that I was obsessed with in this store. I was looking for a birdie charm, which, well, you might see on my channel that I unboxed one recently. That is a, a vintage Hermes bag. Pretty cool design there. Then we're just going back over to the Louis Vuitton section. Oh, that is a supermodel tote. Very cool piece. I loved the little design on this Hermes scarf. I just obsessed with Hermes scarves. They just do the most impeccable um, illustrations. That is a Mademoiselle watch, I think. I think Chanel just recently reissued those and some, you know, very collectible costume jewelry. They don't make them like they used to. Some Chanel sunnies. That shop I just went to, Camellia? What is it called? Camellia. Camellia, vintage. 
really cute bags in there, worth checking out. Pricing was a bit random. Some of the items in there were on the higher end, definitely compared to one of the stores I visited previously. Like, the, definitely a little bit more of a premium in there, but really cool selection. A lot of Murakami pieces, like the, um, you know, the anime eye uh, big carry-on bag. That is just incredible, that bag. I've never really got to see one up and close in real life. They even had a really nice crocodile plume bag which was just to die for um, lots of vintage Chanel as well they yeah it's obviously mainly vintage but they did have some newer bags as well in there I saw Chanel 19 I saw some like newer walks and that sort of thing so a bit of a mix but worth checking out may as well it's good to just check them all out because sometimes you find a random gem that was incorrectly priced or just really rare and you just you know have to have it so worth having a look That looks like an old, an old uh, film viewing place, cinema. Yeah. After a big day of shopping, we ended up in Shibuya. Shibuya. <laughs> it's really easy to like walk all across Tokyo. Like we were walking all day. Unfortunately, I can't keep the music in this vlog because it's probably copyrighted, but there was this interesting store called My Sugar Babe. Let me know if you've heard of that brand before. Then we had, I think this was Kith, but they have this section where you could make your own ice cream with cereal, which I really wanted to get, but at the time... I don't know why we decided not to eat ice cream because I think we were trying to save our appetite for dinner but I still really wanted to get the ice cream but then I thought nah and it was quite overpriced actually I think it was just like literally soft serve with cornflakes on top I'm like meh don't know if that looks amazing but anyways then we had cafe kitsune I went here last time and I picked up a little tote bag and some matcha latte pretty trendy little cafe here um it's uh, I guess like uh, from the brand Mason Kitsune which is uh, pretty cute they're famous for their like Fox logo um, I was pretty obsessed with this brand at one point but I kind of got over it but yeah you can buy it online as well Alex is just there um, waiting for me because I'm just filming and we ended up passing a Gucci store um, to the left they had pretty similar stock to Australia but uh, yeah, quite interesting. You can see a lot of, like, I guess, Japanese designer brands in these uh, cities as well. So um, if you're into that, that's probably more worth buying in Japan than European brands tend to be a little bit more expensive. That looked like a kind of a leather goods store. Okay, so Alex, are you excited? He's yeah, trying um, order some Wendy's. Wendy's for the first time. We don't have this in Australia. Mm. I just thought they have biscotti. Yeah, that's spaghetti. Got these drinks, that. Very different to McDonald's, that's mm. for sure. I'm scared. You're scared? Yeah. But how good it's gonna be. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm. If it's too good, you might have to come back. Look, dip. Flavor potato. Zucchini CBP. Zucchini? <laughs> Zucchini CBP. Have you tried the strawberry mango yet? Chicken burger. All right, guys, so this is my dinner. I just got a little rice bowl, onigiri. I got this little salad. Um, I got some kimchi there and then i got some greens lettuce green lettuce seaweed garlic sesame oil i'm just gonna combine the salads into the salad and then eat my rice bowl and then alex got wendy's oh, wendy's something i've never seen is this little bag here yeah for your drink oh wow yeah very organized very organized yes. and my other bag 
We're going to zoom in if you like. There's some chibis and a burger. Oh, it's some dipping chips. Yeah, yep. dipping chips. Yep. All yeah. right, give it a go. Yeah. Let's try one chip. The chips look like actually very good. Yeah. Looks like a real potato. Looks like McDonald's. Yeah. Tastes like it too. Ah. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. Interesting. Looks alright, I suppose. Alright. Oh, yeah. I hope, yeah. hope it tastes alright. I hope right. it tastes alright. Mm. That's my salad of salads. Um, Alex has got his little burger there. Yeah. yeah. You can have some kimchi too if you want. Oh, I'll probably need some after this. Yeah. What do you reckon? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we'll get to the final ver to the verdict after you finish. Okay, Alex, final thoughts on the Wendy's compared to KFC, compared to McDonald's, compared to whatever other burgers you've eaten. Okay. Look, I wouldn't get it again. Yeah. It tastes like Burger King or Hungry Jack's. Yeah. But then the cheese is like when you go to the supermarket and you make your own burger and use the cheese from the supermarket instead of like the orange yellow cheese that comes in the burgers. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it just doesn't taste like, you don't get the full... Don't get that. Like I could make that at home. Yeah. If I want the yeah. home style taste. Yeah, yeah. You, just, you want the takeaway taste. Yeah. And then this like honey mustard sauce tastes like vomit. Tastes like vomit. Yeah. Oh. What about the chip? The chip, a little bit flavourless. Flavourless chip. Yeah. yeah. And not really crispy or soggy, just somewhere in the middle. So and, and the iced coffee, I had one sip and that's all I'll have. And I love coffee. I always finish my drink. Sorry about that, Alex. Sorry about that. Should have just had the 7 Eleven salad. Yeah. Stay tuned for some more vlogs. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe and leave me an ice cream emoji if you got to the end. Um, and yeah, thanks for all your support. See you next time.